welcome to my channel Sophie Serenity where I talk to you about my love for dressmaking, fabrics, patterns, we have a little bit of sewing chit chat and I document my journey to become a seamstress. So if that's something that sounds of interest to you then keep on watching. Welcome back to all my regular viewers and if you're new here, hi! I hope you enjoy what you, hit, what you see. So welcome to this week's Friday Sews where I talk to you about what I've been sewing up this week and my sewing plans for the week ahead. So this week I have sewn a few items up. The first thing that I've, or the first couple of items that I've sewed up are the pansy dresses from Poppy and Jazz that I talked about in my plans video last week. And um, these are for um, some family members. We've got twin baby girls in the, well, they're not babies anymore, they're two. They're a month younger than Alice and um, they're John's cousin's children. Amelia and Grace, absolutely cute as hell, um, and it was their, it's their birthday at the end of March, so I was keen to make them something, um, yeah, make them something as a gift, because I hadn't done that before, because I've always been a bit nervous about, you know, will it be good enough, etc, but I'm starting to work through that um, perfectionism flaw in my personality <laughs> um, so yeah, I made up the dresses in a lovely pink Toucan jersey that I had in my stash um, and had for, for a very long time from when I first started sewing um, and I made up two identical dresses and um, I'll insert photographs because I've sent them off now so they're hopefully um, going to be with them in Manchester so I um, yeah, I'd obviously made this dress before for Alice. Um, it's a really simple sew. I didn't even need to look at the instructions. It was just very simple to put together. I did it in an evening um, and, you know, kind of bulk cut out, bulk sewed. And then I put in these really cute um, labels that I got from Little Rosy Cheeks, which say, you are loved. So I just thought they were really cute. So yeah, that, that's what I made. I made them in a size two to three, which may be a little bit big for them. Um, but better for them to grow into it than um, you know it be too small. So I'm really really happy with them, and I can't wait for the um, Catherine, their mum, to get them, and hopefully she likes them. So that was the first thing that I made. The second thing that I made um, was something that I had finished actually the week before, but I couldn't show um, it on last week's Friday sews because I. It was for a collaboration that I did with Claire from Stitch Hem Sew, and that was my um, Celeste blouse from Selkie Patterns that I've done a full review on, so I won't go into too much detail on it, but here's the blouse. It's looking a bit creased because it's been on my pile um, to talk about, um, but I'll insert photographs of it. And um, yeah, I made it in this lovely Lady McEl McElroy blush coloured Love Note um, cotton lawn. Um, which I got in my So Hayley Jane box from February and I talk about, I'll link the card um, to the collaboration video it, up above and you can check it out where I go through, do a full review of the pattern, what problems I encountered etc. Um, yeah, because I did have a few. <laughs> um, so that's that. So the other thing that I um, have finished this week is my V9075, which is the Vogue jumpsuit and dress that I started way back in January. For those of you that have been watching for that long, you'll know that I was planning on making this with the Pebbles Marocaine Dash Pebbles Marocaine crepe that I got in December's So Hayley Jane box. Um, I had a wedding to go to in, at the end of February, which I wanted to wear a me made. So I made a twirl of this in some just duvet material to get the fit right because I know that Vogue patterns or just big four patterns in general come up really large. And I'm glad I did that because it was far too big the size that I twirled and um, I thought I'd got all my measurements correct and I made, sewed up the, it came together really quickly, I sewed it up um, and got to the point where I inserted the invisible zip. And as I've shared on, on um, my vlogs before, invisible zips I really do struggle with and that's just because I've not been sewing that long, you know, I've only been sewing since the summer and seriously making clothes since October. 
and you know it's a skill and it takes quite a long time to master that skill and I'd only actually put in I think this was my third invisible zip so I hadn't done that many and I had discussed this on my vlog and loads of you were really 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 helpful and suggested I watch the so essential um zip tutorial which I did watch and it was absolutely fantastic and it was a complete game changer for me in respect of putting the invisible zips in and if even you haven't watched it I'll link the um, card up here so you can go straight to it but one of the things there's a couple of things that I didn't do that she talked about that have really changed the game for me one of it one of them's interfacing where you put the zip the other is sewing up the seam where the zip's gonna go first and then with like um, a long, like a basting stitch so that that's actually sewn together and then placing the zip on that with some um, kind of sticky tape, which washes out. I can't remember what it's actually called the tape, but um, I've got it in my stash somewhere. But it's basically just like a double-sided tape and then when you wash the garment, it washes away. But you stick, stick the um, tape, sorry you stick the zip on um using that and then once that's in position you hand baste it in and i've got a picture of where i've hand basted it with some red thread which i'll insert here so you can see what i've done and then once that's stuck in place and, and, and basted you then undo that stitching that you've done along that seam and then what happens then is you can undo the zip and it's perfectly in position then also I watched the Stitch Sisters Invisible Zip tutorial, which I'll insert a card to. And <clears throat> very similar, they talked about interfacing and basting the, the zip in. But the one thing they talked about on that was um, the zipper foot that they used. <clears throat> she, she talked about how she used to have an, um, an old zipper foot and they now have a new zipper foot that they use and how that new zipper foot is so much better. And the difference between the old and the new was that the grooves that the teeth of the zip go into were much deeper. And I realised that I had the same zipper foot that they were talking about <clears throat> that they swapped out. So I straight away ordered a new zipper foot and oh my God, that's made a massive difference. So I was really, really excited. I put the zip in and it, the zip went in perfectly. But when I tried it on, at the back here, I had a lot of bunching up of the fabric. So it looked too big. So I had to take the zip around, put it back in, and then it's still kind of bunched up. I haven't actually got, I might have a photograph that I'll put in if I have. And I started Googling to try and find out what, what the problem was. And everything I Googled, it kind of scared me because it was saying that sometimes if you haven't used interfacing or the fabric's particularly um, delicate, you can stretch the fabric, which means you get all this bunching up. So I was really, really disheartened because I thought that's what had happened. So I kind of put it to one side in my UFO um, box time was ticking away and the pressure I was putting on myself to get this outfit for the wedding um, was just too much so I put it away and just kind of forgot about it and thought I'll relook at it maybe in a couple of months. Anyway I was watching a vlog um, by Rachel at Stitched Up where she had um, got, got an, a jumpsuit out of her UFO pile and she's been She's been talking about how she's been dieting recently and she'd made this jumpsuit and when she put it on last year it was far too big, far too small for her. So she'd put it in her UFO pile but because she'd lost some weight she tried it on and it started, it fitted. So she re-put um, all the buttons on, basically finished the project and it fit perfectly and she felt really, you could tell on the vlog that she just felt amazing in it and um that kind of inspired me to get this back out of my um ufo pile and i had a look at it and i thought Do you know what i think i just need to take some more out of the back so i got my partner to help me i put it took the zip off put it back on put the dress on and then got him to basically pull it so it fitted nicely and, and mark with chalk and basically when he did that it meant that either side at the top of the of the dress i'll actually show you on this dummy so at the top here in this v i actually took out probably about three and a half to four centimeters and what that's basically told me is i must have quite a narrow top of the back here 
so it basically come in a v and then went down to the normal seam allowance right down at the bottom of my waist and in the waist i actually had to have a smaller seam allowance than um suggested because as i've talked about before my waist actually is is not as nipped in as the rest of my measurements are so sometimes i have to let out the waist so yeah i had to take quite a lot of out of the back once i'd done that i put the zip in using the so essential method and put it on and it fitted absolutely perfectly and i just i was so happy i've got video footage which i'll put in which shows the dress off the the jumpsuit off amazingly and here it is i mean it's just stunning i'm very disappointed that i couldn't wear it for the wedding but it was just a process that i had to go through and i don't know if you can see but you probably can't see the zip and that's because it's so amazingly invisible <laughs> Get it to, you know it's not perfect it's you know it's a little bit out there but it's 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 good enough for me and i'm really happy with it the detail on this jumpsuit are lovely it's got these lovely pleats here that you can see here um, it's got gorgeous pockets i will definitely make this jumpsuit again going from never making it again if you'd asked me a month ago to now it's beautiful i'd love to make it in some different fabrics um because you just feel i just feel really nice in this it's really flattering and they do a dress version as well which would probably be even easier because you won't have to deal with um you know the fit of the crotch etc but yeah i really really love this vogue 9075 it's wonderful and also to mention rachel from stitch drop actually did a sew along for this and I watched that and it was really helpful. So again, I'll link the card to Rachel's vlog um, where she does a sew along if you fancy sewing this up. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, I can't actually remember what size I made in this because it was so long ago. But if I can figure it out, I'll, um, I'll insert it somewhere for you. But yeah, um, I really love that. I'm really happy with it and uh yeah it just shows that don't ever give up on your ufos and sometimes a bit of space away from a project can just mean that you know that that space away from the project can give you that um time to digest what the issues are and and, and give you the kind of confidence to retackle it um and not feel so disheartened so yeah i'm really happy with that um the other thing that i've been sewing this week i'll just give you a sneaky peek of is you can see it here on the on the um dress dummy is i've been making the tammy handmade etty etta just get it so the tammy handmade etty camisole which is a free pattern from um tammy handmade and it's got this beautiful um scalloped detail here i'm making it for the so yellow for endo challenge so it's not finished yet but i thought i'd give you a sneaky peek my scallops are quite subtle um but if you want more defined scallops you need to just go a bit deeper with your um stitching so i probably would do that next time because it's not as predominant as i probably would like but it's obviously a first go at it um i do think as well i might put some interfacing in this as well because it's a little bit floppy um and I don't want that look on my um, on my um, uh, camisole. But yeah, it's a really lovely pattern. I've made her other camisole top, which is just a plain camisole top, and it's actually one of the first ones that I made when I first. It's first item of clothing I made after my um, sewing course and um, yeah, I was really, really. It's a really lovely pattern. I also to go along with that have made the henna i'm looking at making the henna trousers which is not a free pattern and these are the trousers that she's paired with the with the etty top and these are a wide leg um with pockets elasticated waist trouser which i'm all about and i've got to hem these but they are completed pretty much um and i've made those and got pockets in them and they're really again a really simple sew um but yeah, I'll reveal them properly when I do my sewendo. But yeah, they're a work in progress and they're coming along nicely. So I recommend that pattern. 
So yeah, the So Yellow for Endo Challenge, for those of you who don't know, is ran by Jess at So What If I Sew, who is running this challenge in the month of March. Reveal dates on the 26th of March under the hashtag So Yellow for Endo 22. And it's all about raising awareness for endometriosis. And so yeah, so if you want to know more about that, check out the hashtag. So also along with that, I have managed to cut out my Jarrah sweatshirt, which is what I am making in this, again for the Endo Challenge, in this lovely cosy, cosy colours um, sweatshirting. Just wait for that to, is that, yeah, wait for that to, there you go, in this cosy colours sweatshirting, which I've got all cut out and I was just waiting for my overlocker thread to come that is in the same mustardy yellow and that's now come so the plan is to get that sewn up next week um, because the reveal is on the 26th of March and I've got so many other challenges that I want to take part in as well so <clears throat> that's what I've been doing so that's all the sewing oh no it's not <laughs> I haven't talked about what I'm wearing today so what I'm wearing today is a me made. It's um, it's only a Freya top that I've made many times before. So it's from Freya Tilly in the Buttons. I'll just stand up. I have got a photograph of it. I've made it in this lovely turquoise um, cotton jersey, which for those of you that follow me know that I did my colour analysis of what colours suit me. And I was very surprised that turquoise is one of my colours. And I do actually like it. <laughs> but I was surprised that it was one of my colours. So yeah, I decided to sew this up. I had some cotton jersey in my stash from Pound Fabrics. Um, and I made this up in the long sleeve, which I've never done before. And I was a bit unsure because I like the three quarter length. But yeah, I really do like it. Um, didn't take anything out of the length of the bodice because although I'm short my body is um, in proportion it's my legs that are short and I didn't take anything out of the arms either so I was really happy with that I make the size 3 in Tilly and the Buttons find that fits me really well um, I'm a 34 bust 28 29 waist and a 37 hip so yeah really happy with that really quick sew sewed it up don't need to look at the instructions anymore because it's quite quick and I sewed that up um one evening last week so yeah and this is to go with um this is to go under um jumpsuits etc as a layering piece really but i thought i'd put it on today to show you and i'll insert a picture because i've got a picture of me wearing it as well so you can see it better so yeah that is what i've been sewing this week just check i haven't done anything else no that is all the sewing i've done um so yeah plans for next week um my plans for next week are busy. I have got a couple of things that I have got to do. I have got to record my So Frugal 22 vlog, which will be going out on the 22nd of March, so please don't miss it. Um, I will be talking through the plans and showing you the fabrics that I am planning on using for my frugal, my um, So Frugal um, item or garment have a few different options for you to have a look at um, and I'm really keen to know what your thoughts are and what you'd like me to see make up so that I will be filming and that will be going live on Tuesday and I really need to make sure that I get all my fabric washed this week because <clears throat> the deadline for the So Frugal 22 is the 31st of March so I don't have long to get that made up so that's one of the plans um, and I need to get whatever it is I decide to do cut out next week as well so I can get it sewn up as well. So that's that. The other thing that I've, if you follow me on Instagram, um, that I've planned to do is, well, I wasn't going to do this challenge because I just don't know when I'm going to actually do it with time, etc. Um, I'm as some of you know I'm getting married in May and my hen do is on the 1st of April um, so <laughs> I haven't got massive amounts of time between now and then to get stuff sewn up and one of the items that I want to sew up at some point is an outfit for um, my hen do so that's also on the list of plans to do and that's with the fabric I got from Guthrie and Garney which is the elephant ink fabric um, which I've shared on a previous vlog um, which is a linen um, that I want to make a dress with of some description for my hen do. So I've also got that to cut out um, this week and sew up. Um, but also I have seen the Sew Recreate Your Look 22 challenge, which is basically a challenge where you 
you find some inspiration either off the high street pinterest of a ready to wear look that you really like and you try and recreate it with a pattern and a fabric um that you can either buy or from your stash etc and i've seen loads of amazing um shares of this and oh, i just had i had fomo i had fear of missing out so yesterday i shared my inspiration and it's this um i put a picture a leopard print um wrap dress that's kind of got two different contrasting fabrics but the same in different colorways um, and i really really love that look and i'd seen it a few times and just felt really inspired by it and then when this recreate the look challenge came along i was like oh this is perfect for that so this is the i've insert the picture of the dress and this is the dress that i want to make in it it's the aura dress from um paper cut patterns and it's a skirt and a dress but obviously i want to make the dress version so it's similar but not quite the same and i want to make it in these two animal print viscoses that i got from beyond the pink door so it's in the two different colorways and i've got it in the cobalt blue and i've got it in the coral and i've got two meters of that so hopefully that's enough to do that that um dress as you can see i just think they work really well and um yeah i'm excited to do that I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to do this uh, because with all the other plans that I've got, making this as well might be too much, but it would be nice to have this for my hen do as well because I know we're going out for some nice meals um, and um, drinks, etc. So yeah, I'd like to have this dress as well, um, but I just don't know if I'll have time to get it sewed up with everything else that's going on in March. Um, so yeah, but I wanted to share the plan, you know, have the aspiration there, but if I don't get it sewn up, I will get this sewn up because it's something I wanted to do anyway. But I think they're lovely. And these fabrics, as I say, are from, from beyond the pink door, they're in stock still now. And I'll put links um, in the show notes. So you, if you want to purchase that, you can do. The pattern actually says for the dress, it takes... 2.75 meters of fabric so i've obviously got four meters there and i got four because obviously it'll be there'll be some pattern placement that i need to kind of fiddle around with um and i think you know there might be i need to decide which fabric i use a use for the tie or whether I do a mixture I don't know so there's a there's a bit of work to do on pattern placement and i don't want to rush it because i really want this to work out nicely so fingers crossed get it done for the recreate look challenge but if not i will definitely get it done and obviously share that with you i haven't looked at sizing or anything on this yet and it actually says it's an intermediate pattern so i wouldn't put myself in an intermediate <laughs> level yet um but the reason the way you get good at sewing is just practicing and if you just always do easy projects you're never gonna you're never gonna progress are you so yeah i am um, i ignore that and just go on with it maybe if it had been advanced i probably would have done it um so yeah i'm interested to see what that looks like and if anybody's made this pattern please let me know um what you think and if there's any tips or things that i need to be aware of on it because usually i'd make a twirl with with this type of pattern but yeah i don't really have time if i want to get to get the so create the look um challenge done so yeah that's that plan as well so yeah that's really um it's quite a quick one today uh i haven't got any purchases to share with you um or anything like that um so yeah just very very busy there's going to be lots of vlogs coming out from me there's going to be as i say the so frugal um 22 vlog and um, for those of you who don't know what so frugal is where have you been because it's everywhere so it's just sewing up a item of clothing um from a free pattern with some um fabric from your stash um, and sharing it on instagram so um yeah uh, the also the other things that i've got coming up is um mine and crystals from my social threads challenge which is starting in april so I know people are going to be a little bit challenged out from March, but this is a fresh reset for 1st of April. It is selfless, so April 22, and the rules of the challenge are just sew something for somebody else. Um, myself and um, 
Crystal will be sharing a vlog on the 1st of April to launch the challenge where we talk about all the sponsors involved. As you know, there's over 40, I think, now sponsors. We've got some fantastic prizes. People have been so generous. And if you want to know a little bit more about that, I'll put the link in my um in the show notes to the vlog to the to the Instagram post. And yeah, we're gonna share our thoughts and ideas and what our plans are for Selfless So. And I have got some great plans going to be a doggy outfit for those of you that are animal lovers <gasps> exciting my partner is mortified that i'm going to make the dog an outfit but it's got to be done got to be done and um, so yeah i'll be sharing the plans for my selfless so april and i actually plan to do no sewing for myself in april it will all be purely for other people which as i've shared before i used to be quite a selfish sewer but since i've started making things for other people it's really given me i don't know i don't want to sound a bit you know gushy but it does give you that like warm feeling of like i don't know just nice to do something for somebody else so that's a really exciting challenge and i'm excited for all the people that are going to take part in that so that's all from me i think i'll leave it there for this week i hope you have a great um productive week of sewing and um i'll see you soon happy sewing bye